Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. Once again, I'm your host, Peter Nelson, and I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones. Today, I'm going to show you a very quick and easy way to identify stones based on a picture. Here's how you do it. You don't. No, seriously. <sighs> that was easy. Experts do not identify stones based on photos for some very important reasons that we're going to touch on in this episode. And those that say they can identify a stone correctly based on photos are frauds and you should run far, far away from them. And why is that? I'll support that statement by saying that unless they have connections with supernatural entities, and maybe even then, then the way that we actually know what a stone is is by testing how the stone behaves with light. And so if you give me a photo there's no way for me to know any of the properties that I need to know to distinguish this stone from a piece of glass. So oftentimes what'll happen in gemology groups on Facebook or something else, maybe they connect with me directly, they'll send me a picture of a stone like this and it will look like this. I know, I know, not everybody's a fantastic photographer, but that's not really the point. Whether the lighting is good like this, or whether it's just an average photo, we still don't identify on a photo because I need to know how does this stone behave with light. Glass and this stone right here, which could be an aquamarine, could be glass, could be something completely different. I've even seen tourmaline in this color. Could be topaz. The way I distinguish those stones from each other is by testing how they behave with light. Things like what is its refractive index? I can check with the Chelsea filter and see, does it have kind of a pinkish glow? Maybe that tells me something about, does it have cobalt in there? Maybe it's a synthetic stone. But I have to be able to put my hand on this stone, turn it around, look at it from different angles, see if there's any natural inclusions or synthetic inclusions, things inside of the stone that can give me an idea about where does this stone come from. But if I just have a photo, I'm not able to move it. I'm not able to actually test it. And I'm not even able to see the true color as you may have heard in one of these episodes over here. Because fundamentally, our cameras are not able to see the same thing our eyes see. So if you really want identification of a stone, you need to take it to somebody who is an expert who has experience in testing stones and has the right equipment. They need to put their hand on it. So what can I know from a photo? If the photo is clear enough and close enough, some stones will show you features about them that may give you an idea of what the stone is. So if you just search around on eBay, you'll actually see some pretty up close photos of any kind of stone that you might be interested in. Some of them are complete lies, some of them are cheats, some of them are natural stones, but it's very difficult to distinguish those two and sometimes impossible to distinguish those two based on a photo. But there are some things that we can see. For example, you might see natural growth features. Sapphires, when they grow, have a hexagonal pattern in the crystal, and sometimes you can still see that in an already cut gem. Maybe it's in color zoning, or especially in star sapphires, you'll actually see the pattern in some stones, especially if they're more opaque. And when I see that growth pattern, I can be quite confident that this stone has a natural origin. And what I mean by that is that it came from the earth, not necessarily from a lab, very unlikely. The cheapest and most common way to produce synthetic sapphire is using the flame fusion method. And that typically ends up having curved lines in it. So you won't see these straight lines. So again, talking about those curved lines that happen in flame fusion synthetic sapphires, when I see a stone like this, I cannot be certain that it's a synthetic sapphire, but I would know that I cannot buy this stone on the internet because I would want to hold it in my hand, move it around and see, are these lines actually curved or is it just cut in a weird angle and they're actually straight lines? Because depending on how the crystal was oriented, those may just be natural growth lines. But from the way that this picture was taken, they look like curved bands, which leads me to believe it might be a synthetic stone. Other things that you can see from a photo are very common treatments like lead glass filling perhaps, especially if there's added color. So in photos like this, you can see that there's color concentrations that follow the cracks. That doesn't happen in natural stones. There can be color concentrations, but it's typically as the crystal grows. At different times in the crystal's growth, there's more nutrients available to the stone, and so the color is more intense in those bands. That's very natural, but this nonsense is very, very much so done by man. Gravel quality stones are then filled with colored glass in order to give the stone an overall more attractive appearance. And some of these stones can look quite nice, but the fact is, if we're talking about spending money on a stone, there's a huge price point difference between sapphire that has been filled with blue glass and a natural, unheated, completely unadulterated sapphire. Night and day, as it should be. 
And that's really what makes stone so valuable. You can have pretty, but it's really the thing that is rare that makes it more valuable. So in a lot of places on the internet, there are some unscrupulous dealers that will use titles like this, natural sapphire. In their mind, well, my stone came from the earth, of course it's natural. Yeah, but you treated the color. So in the gem trade, that's completely unacceptable to call it natural anymore. Yes, the stone was mined in the earth, but the color is not natural. It has been treated. This one seller gets a little bit of a pass because at least they've disclosed in the fine print at the bottom that the stone is treated and they do call it cobalt lead glass or fracture filling. But this other dealer, however, did not disclose it. In fact, they went so far as to say there was no enhancement or treatment. The lion heifers. So does that mean that you can't buy on the internet, whether it's eBay or Craigslist or any other website? No, of course you can buy, but you have to be careful and you have to know what are the limitations and where the traps might be. At the end of the day, you buy and sell stones based on trust. You can get lab reports, but there are also unscrupulous labs out there. So it's very important that you find people that you trust and you do business with them. For those of you that don't live close to a gemologist, things that you can do to help a gemologist out if you are talking to them on the internet and help narrow your search to find out if it's worth putting more money and time into looking for the true identity of this stone, things that they would need are more information. So rather than shooting a picture, especially in poor light and shaky, then make sure that you are getting video from multiple angles. So what I would do is I would take the stone and slowly rotate it so they can see it from different angles, especially at 90 degree turns. If they can see the stone at 90 degree turns, both on this axis and on this axis, that may give them the ability to see certain features of the stone that will help you to know more about that stone. If you have one of those macro lenses that you can clip onto your, your phone or your camera, if you have one of those, that's great. Then you can get much closer on the stone as well. And they may be able to see certain inclusions that will help them to know is this stone of a natural origin or a synthetic origin. Sometimes that can help you to narrow your search. Otherwise, a gemologist really does need to use their tools. There are certain things that we can know very quickly using these tools and our knowledge, but we need to be able to put our hands on it. We need to see it in person and with real light. There's a lot of things that a camera can do to deceive you. So, as usual, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and please do reach out. I'm not trying to discourage you from learning more about gemstones. I hope that you do, but there are certain things that just cannot be known from a photo. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.